this is Mark Cooper then pre Macclesfield at home in the FA Cup. Mark, how much of a, a sea change is it switching from the league and the Checker Trade Trophy now to the FA Cup? Um, looking forward to it. It's it's good. You know the FA Cup's fantastic competition, and um, certainly I used to I used to love it. FA Cup morning, getting up and watching the whole build up um, when I was a kid, and um, still get excited about it now. So. It's great if you can have a run in the FA Cup and, and get yourself to the third, fourth round and get one of the big boys. It's, it's a great occasion for everyone. And I suppose even though the chairman doesn't necessarily <clears throat> need the money here for the club, your budget actually could be boosted by a real cup run, couldn't it? I think you can always you can always do do with the money. You know, it's you know, if we're gonna, we want to try and make the place sustainable itself, then we need to be earning money from, from other streams and the FA Cup is certainly one. Macclesfield at home, on paper, your favourites, but is that a different change of mentality? Forest Green now, the ones looking to defend against an upset? Possibly. We, we, we were the favourites last year when we went to Sutton, I would say, and we, and we, and we lost. Um, but no, we, we're not thinking too heavily about favouritism and, and, and what have you. We're just looking at the game and, and we know we've got a tough game in front of us against a team that are playing some really good football. And then they've changed their style a bit. They're, they're trying to really play and play out from the back. So it's it's a game that um, we have to be wary of, and we have to be at full tilt to win it. So you're expecting a different type of game than you've played against them last season. How much of an eye do you still keep on the national league? Yeah, keep a keep a, an eye on it. You know, we watch. I always watch the the goals and, and and little bits and pieces. And you know, I've watched Macclesfield's last four games, and they really try and play. You know, and uh, credit to to John and his team there. They they do really well. They're playing some really good football. And Forest Green against Macclesfield brings back memories of 2001, the marathon penalty shootout. You were captain that night of Rovers, scored a great free kick. What are your memories of the game? I remember it being dark. The old stadium was dark and the floodlights weren't great. Um, I can remember, remember scoring a goal. I can remember missing a penalty. I can remember scoring a penalty in the shootout and it seemed to go on for ages. And, uh, and unfortunately, we were wrong side of a record penalty shootout, I think. But uh, no, it was a good night. But uh, the, the result, hopefully, will be different on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems strange 16 years on, but is there almost you know, somewhere in your sort of memory bank a score to settle on that one? No, nah, not at all. Game's gone, long long gone. It's just, just the next game. And I don't get too, you probably know by now, I don't get too heavy into things that have gone before. It's about... What, what we've got to do on Saturday and we've got to play really well to win a game of football and, and to get into the, the second round, which is what we want. Does it help that you've got so many players who've been with the club from the non-league days that they'll know, <clears throat> they'll know about what's required to, you know, I suppose, earn the right to win the ball and play the football that you want to? Yeah, but it's the same in any game, Paul. We, you have to earn the right to play, whoever you're playing against. And, we will make all our players be fully aware of Macclesfield's strengths um, and, and any weaknesses. You know, on by video, you know, we'll show them all, all the stuff that we can on Macclesfield, and then we'll work on that on the training pitch, so they're fully clued up on on what what their strengths and weaknesses are. So, um, obviously, they'll know some of the players from playing against them last year. How is Alex Yakoviti after going off on Tuesday against Swansea in the Checker Trade? We'll have to wait and see how he is tomorrow. Um, he'll, he'll be touch and go, but uh, we're hopeful he'll come through. What is it? Is it a hip issue? Or... Yeah, he got a whack on his hip, um, on his hip bone. So hopefully it's just an impact injury, and he can he can keep his place in the team. Everyone else okay? Uh, apart, oh, everybody that's featured in the last couple of day, uh, last couple of games is fit. Yeah. And you've been able to give the likes of Christian Dodge a couple of days off earlier in the week. How much do you expect him to benefit from that? Yeah, I think it's important that you you try and. Um, you know we've been at it full tilt, tilt now for twenty odd games. You know, more or less Saturday, Tuesday. So, you know, Doji's played in every game, and Lee Collins, people like that. It's important that we try and keep them fresh, and um, Doji certainly is at his best when he's fresh. And, and we've done it a couple of times, and he's always bounced back with a goal and a real, real dominant performance. No Shamir Mullings involved the other night. Is he okay? He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. It's. Uh, you know, I, I I base the the team and the and the and the squad on on what I see in training and the games that that people play in, and um, that that's why. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Paul.
on um, going back to Tuesday night, was there anyone that sort of put their hand up and said, Gaffer, pick me? Did you see anyone out there that warranted Jordan being... Stevens. Yeah, that was the one that I was going to sort of chuck at you. From a Jordan Stevens was the only one, yeah. Yeah. Um, how far do you think Jordan can go in the game? Because he's very... I mean, he's catching the eye at the moment when he gets his little opportunities. It is, it's, a, it's a difficult situation when you... <clears throat> When you change a few bodies around in the team, it's a difficult situation for the boys that, that come in and they know they're under pressure to perform. And, and that's just the way it is. It happens up and down the country. And when you get your opportunity, you've got to take it. And, uh, and if you don't, then you have to wait a little, a, um, a little while longer. But Jordan certainly looked um, what, what we know he, he is. <clears throat> He's got the ability to glide past people in midfield. And, and I, I purposely played him a, a bit deeper the other night to see if he had the discipline to play alongside another midfield player and, and do the other side of the game and get him back in and defend him, which he did. So he's got an opportunity to go as far as he wants in the game and the hard work starts for him now. He's got good people around him and, uh, and I'm sure they'll, as we all are, advise him the right way. He's got to train really hard and every time he gets on the pitch, he's got to make the most of it. Yeah. They talk about age. Um, Wayne Rooney playing the Premier League at 17. Jordan is 17. Is he is he ready? Well, every time he's gone on the pitch for for the first team, he, he's <clears throat> he's done fine. Like he he played, he came on at Cheltenham, uh, scored a goal. Then he got picked up about <clears throat> of tonsillitis, which knocked him knocked him back for a couple of weeks. And it took him a couple of weeks to find his feet again. But now, obviously, he got a, got an opportunity on on Tuesday night. And uh, he's going to play in the FA Youth Cup tonight. So I think that's important that he, we keep him grounded. He's going to play with his mates in the FA Youth Cup tonight at Bristol Rovers. And he'll be involved with us on Saturday.